The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. Let's examine the Ark of Noah. The word Ark was translated from the Hebrew word Teba, T-E-B-A-H. And it literally means a box. It means a box. The word Teba appears in precisely two stories in the Bible. Firstly, the story of Noah and that of Moses. And if you observe carefully, both applications of the word Teba involved salvation or deliverance. It involved salvation or deliverance. Noah and all that were with him in the ark were preserved from the flood. Genesis chapter 7 verse 23. Genesis chapter 7 verse 23. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. Now, if you observe similarly, Moses was delivered from river in which Pharaoh commanded that the sons born of the Hebrew woman be cast in. Exodus chapter 2 verse 3. Exodus chapter 2 verse 3. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river banks. So Moses also was kept in an ark just like Noah and the eight people were in an ark with the emphasis of water as the agent or means of destruction in the two stories we have seen. The author is deliberately drawing a parallel between Moses and Noah by employing the theme of a deliverance or God's salvation from chaotic waters. Now pay attention. The essence of the ark, the word Teba, in both narratives we read as a vessel of deliverance from the chaotic water buttresses the intent of the writer. To reveal a connection to the audience of his day where he was communicating. Now as we have explained earlier that the audience of the book of Exodus were the children of Israel delivered from Egypt. In teaching the children of Israel, Moses, Moses draws different parallels within the book of Genesis to his audience. For instance... Moses shows a connection between the children of Israel and Adam. A connection between the children of Israel and Adam. When he presented them with the choice of life and death. Same way Adam was given the same choice. I set before you life and death. The knowledge of the tree of the knowledge. I mean the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Life and death. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 30 verse 11. For this commandment which I commanded this day, it's not hidden from thee. Neither is it far off. Next verse. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us. That we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea. That thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring unto us that we may hear it and do it. 14. But the word is not very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. 15. See, 
I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. So Moses gave the children of Israel the choice. Either choose life or to choose death. The choice of life and death was repeated just as it was to Adam. Look at verse 19 of that same Deuteronomy where we just read. Chapter, 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 chapter 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. That both thou and thy seed may live forever. <clears throat> now, Israel was to choose life. To choose life is to heed to God. To heed to God. To choose death will be to disobey God. And follow other gods. So Israel and Adam are seen to be in similar situations. Both of them had a choice presented to them, life and death. Therefore, the application of the Hebrew word Teba, T-E-B-A-H, in the story of Noah and Moses, presents to us a connection in both men. In that, a deliverance theme is established with the deliverance being from the chaotic waters and the ark as the object of deliverance. Other connection exists between both characters. Aside from both men being pivotal figures in their time, both men are recorded to have found favor with God. Genesis 6, 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Exodus 33, 12 and 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, verse 14, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. 15, And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. 16. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Can you see? Noah found grace. Moses also found grace. Alright? Now, Moses' role in scripture is obvious. In leading the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land, he is also a prophet of God that taught Israel the word of God. Moses was a prophet of God that taught Israel the word of God. That is why he was the one that brought them out of Egypt and took them on their journey to the promised land. Now the Bible authors of the Torah intends for us to see Noah in the same light by establishing all the connections we have just highlighted. Now the questions remain. Was Noah's ark a boat or a ship? Was Noah's ark a boat or a ship? If you examine the cultural and historical meaning of the Hebrew word Teba, it becomes important in understanding what Noah's Ark was about. Now, according to one of the intellectuals of their day by the name Kola Bogtna, the word Teba is an Egyptian 
loaned word, which implies a sacred box or a shrine. The word ark in Egypt, it's an ancient word in Egypt, and it's a loaned word. It implies a sacred box or a shrine. Also, another intellectual, Abraham Yehuda, he argues that the Teba is a sacred shrine. And he further explains that the Teba is a place for divine worship. The Teba, what we call the Ark, the Ark of Noah. Now, that word Ark was a culture, it, it was in the Egyptian culture. They knew that the Ark was a place for divine worship. And houses images of God, which were dedicated to temples. So the Teba was not a unique thing that was done by Noah. It was part of their culture in Egypt to always locate a Teba or an ark as a place of sacred worship. That foundation is very important. In your understanding of where we are going. Now so with this understanding of the word Teba. It reasons as to why Moses' mother used a Teba. Which can be said to be why Pharaoh's daughter was disposed to finding out what was in that Teba. And eventually she cared for Moses. Okay? Now Moses' mother having lived in Egypt. And knowing what a Teba represented in Egypt and to Egyptians could have built one. Hoping that any Egyptian that sees it will not be inclined to the death of the baby. Because the Teba is a place of sacred worship. So she put him intelligently inside and put him in the river. Knowing that any Egyptian that will see that box will want to find out what is in that box. So Pharaoh's daughter's actions towards the Tabor and to the baby in it also suggests her knowledge of the Tabor which influenced her actions. Now take note that the ark built by Moses' mother was not to convey Moses but was to house him. It was to house Moses until he is seen or discovered by anyone. A boat or ship, therefore, does not fit this purpose. Because a boat or ship is to convey. But this is a house where Moses will be until somebody will see him. Now, as we have proposed, using a table for this purpose was deliberate. Knowing the cultural meaning of the table. This will be in mind in building a structure reverenced by Egyptians as a dwelling of their God. A Teba is a dwelling place of the gods of Egypt. So the ark was to be made for the sole purpose of keeping Moses inside till he is found. The description is that of a structure that can house or contain a three month old baby. That is the description. That table that Moses' mother built could house a three month old baby. Though the ark was placed close to a river, the ark has no connotation for a boat or ship in the context of this discourse. The purpose for which the ark was made by Moses' mother was to house or contain Moses temporarily till he will be seen. So the ark was to be a dwelling for Moses, not a boat to convey or keep him afloat. Though it is indicated that the ark was placed at the brink of the river, not in the river. It would not be wrong to assume that she used materials that could help the ark stay afloat should the need arise. Because the ark was kept at the brink of the river and sometimes you know how rivers behave. It could overflow and bring in the ark on the water. 
So she must have used materials intelligently that could be afloat in the river. Are we teaching here? Pay attention. Now, it therefore suffices that we say that as we propose a re-examination and explaining Noah's ark or a ship or boat or any means of transport, what we're going to be explaining here is more than more of a house than a means of transportation. Now the background of the ark being built, the background, you know we examine temple, right? So we're facing ark. The background of the building of the ark was the wickedness of man in the earth. Genesis chapter 6 verse 3. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The word strive, my spirit shall not always strive, was translated from the Hebrew word din. D-I-N. Din. However, earlier manuscripts have this Hebrew word translated as Yadon. Y-A-D-O-N. Earlier manuscripts. Which implies to abide or to abide within. It was derived from the Semitic word Danan. Danan. Which also means to abide with. Now, most, most so, the Septuagint has this rendered as my breath will not reside in humans for long. That's the way the Septuagint renders the Hebrew text of that Genesis. My breath will not reside in humans for long. So the context of this account is God's habitation in and with man. God's habitation in and with man. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 to 16, you can take that down, which is God's sacred area. So in our study of the Ark of Noah, it is important we understand that God's plan for the earth was being reiterated through Noah. Noah was teaching his audience the plan of God for the earth in correcting man's attempt influenced by supernatural beings to deviate from the plan of God. The author is presenting to us God's plan of dwelling with man by using the narrative by using the narrative of the Teba T-E-B-A-H which is the ark or the box by using the narrative of the Teba as a temple motif. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.